In this episode, I'm going to show you more than 40 new features and the changes across 13 different Google Apps. Hello everyone, this is Emad and here's Google Apps updates roundup number 48. So let's find out what's new. The first app I'm going to talk about is YouTube. And now when you drag your finger over the seek bar, you will see a shaded graph that represents the most replayed parts of the video. So by this, you can identify the most interesting moments. Not only this, but the most replayed part will be labeled as shown now on the screen with a sparkle icon next to it. This feature is also available on desktop. All you need to do is to hover your mouse over the seek bar and you will see the same exact graph. This was an experimental feature for some time, but now it's rolling out to everyone. The second feature in YouTube is the ability to unmute the sound for search results. So for example, I'm gonna search for Android 12 videos and then wait for a few seconds until the video starts playing automatically. As you see, I have two toggles at the top right corner, one for sound and one for captions. That's exactly the same thing we have in the home feed. But now it's part of the search as well. By the way, this new feature is experimental and only available for premium users. So you might see this banner in your home feed that will allow you to enroll yourself in the feature right away by tapping on the try it out button. Or the other option is to visit youtube.com slash new and turn on the feature. As you see here, it's called unmute mobile search results. Change number three is the availability of YouTube chapters feature on Chromecast and the Chromecast with Google TV. By this, you can easily navigate the video and jump to the part you are interested in. And finally, YouTube Shorts will now start surfacing ads. And here's one of the examples I took a screenshot for. And as you see, it has a small description. It has the word ad, the name of the advertiser, and a call to action button. And now it's time for today's sponsor. If you are interested to purchase original Windows 10 and Office keys, head over to cdkeyoffer.com using the links in the description below, then apply my special promo code ID20 to get extra 25% discount. Windows 10 OEM key will cost you $16.23, which is very affordable. To complete your purchase, choose your preferred payment method, input the details, and once the payment is done, you will be redirected to the orders screen. To view your code, click on the view keys slash codes button, then click on get the key. To activate your Windows 10 OEM key, copy the code from the website, Head over to your Windows settings, then system, scroll all the way down and click on about, then product key and activation, and finally click on a change. Paste the code in the text field and click on next, then activate, and now your original Windows key got activated. For more offers, please check the links in the description below. And now let's get back to the review. The second app is YouTube Music. Now you can reorder your up next queue by dragging your finger over the handle on the right side, which is a really nice touch. Next, YouTube Music on Wear OS got a couple of new features. The first one is a new tile that allows you to browse your YouTube Music right away by tapping on it. And if you are playing any songs like this one, for example, you will see the name of the album and the singer here on the tile. So we just need to give it some time. And as you see, it will show you the name and the artist. Tapping on it will take you right away to the YouTube Music app. The second change is the ability to start playing or to stream music directly from your smartwatch. So for example, when you tap on any of the playlists, you will see a new play button. Tapping on it will start playing immediately, even if you don't have the songs downloaded on the watch. The feature requires the smartwatch to be connected to a Wi-Fi or an LTE connection. Plus, it doesn't have to be connected to your smartphone. Next, Google Contacts. And now you will see a redesigned contact information page and here's a side-by-side -side comparison with the old design. First of all, each section has its own background color and instead of using the same white background for everything, there is a new section called contact info that didn't exist before and the about section is using a bigger font for the title. Also, when you scroll all the way down, you will no longer see the background color like the old design but now it has the normal white color. Also, the contact name is now centered instead of being left aligned like before. And finally, you will no longer see the horizontal separators like before. Now let's talk about Gmail and it only got one new change. Now when you open any of the labels like start, the snoozed, important and so on, you will see some filters at the top that can help you locate the messages you are looking for. The filters are from to attachment, date is unread, exclude calendar events. 
and also the first filter will allow you to quickly switch between different labels without the need to use the side menu. You also have the option to hide filters and show it again by using the same button, but when you hide the filters and open any message and then go back again to the same page, they will reappear again so it will not save your preference. The filters you see here are exactly the same ones you get when you search for something, the only difference is the ability to modify the list of messages without the need to search for a specific query. The web version of Gmail also got the same feature when you open any of the labels and the filters will appear under the search bar, same as the mobile phone. Next, Google Photos. And the first change is a small visual tweak. Now when you start scrolling in your gallery, you will see at the top left corner the date and the location of the photos you are currently viewing in case you missed to check it at the beginning. Not only this, but when you tap on the information, it will take you right away to the map view. The second change is the ability to directly delete photos from your album. So for example, here is one of the albums I have. All I need to do is to open the photo, swipe up and scroll all the way to the left. And now we have an option called move to trash. Previously, we used to have remove from album only, and by this, if you want to delete any photo from your album, you have to locate it in your gallery yourself, but now this option will make it much easier for you. But keep in mind, this feature only works with regular or private albums. So for example, if you have a shared album like maybe this one, you will not see the option to move to trash. Next, Google Calculator. And the first change is the bigger and the bolder font for the numbers. Plus, the delete button now has a fill color instead of only using an outlined icon. The second change is the new calculator tile, and this is how it looks. Tapping on it will simply open the app for you. And finally, the app got a two-column design for tablets when used in landscape mode. To show you this, I had to set the smallest width of the screen to 600 under developer options. And as you see, now we have two columns one for the history and one for the functions. Also, the clock app got updated and the first change is the darker color for the alarm toggles and the same applies to the time picker. Under the timer page, you will see a bigger keypad when you try to set a new one with bolder and bigger font, similar to what we have seen in the calculator app. And when it comes to tablets, it also got some design tweaks. The first thing is the navigation rail on the left side instead of showing at the bottom. And we got also the same two column design like we have seen in the clock app. And this is how it looks in the alarm. Here's how it looks in the clock, timer, stopwatch, and bedtime. Now let's talk about Google Play Store and now it shows more information like never before, starting with the new accessibility tags. So when you search for any accessibility app like this one, for example, and then scroll down, you will see here some tags that will show you what type of features it supports. It supports learning disability, visual assistance, and motor assistance. Tapping on any of them will show you more apps that falls under the same category. The second change is the new compatibility section. When you open any app listing and then tap on about, scroll all the way down, there is a new section here called compatibility that shows if this app can work with the current device you are using or any other devices that falls under your Google account. And in my case, I have the Fossil smartwatch and it says that this app can work on this device. And lastly, Google Play Store on the web got a complete revamp and now it looks exactly the same as the mobile phone. You will first see the different categories like games, apps, movies and TVs, books and the children, and the search bar has been replaced with a button. Clicking on it will reveal the text field along with the account switcher. After that, you will see some filters based on the device type. So in the case of games, you can filter by phone, tablet, TV or Chromebook. And under apps, you can also see watch and car. Under movies and TV, you will get different filters based on the type of the show. Similarly, under books and finally under children, you can filter with the age. The app listing also got redesigned. So when you click on any of the apps, you will see a very big section at the top that shows the name and the trailer. Also, the install button is located over here. And when you scroll down, you will see more information about this app. The only thing that not yet redesigned, when you hit the install button, you will still see the same old design of the Play Store. So hopefully Google will work on this in the future. Clicking on the profile picture will reveal more settings similar to what we have on the mobile phone, like library and devices, payments and subscriptions, and so on and so forth. The only new thing that you won't find on your mobile phone just yet is the new data safety section. 
When you open the listing of any app and then scroll down, you will see data safety. And when you go inside this section, you will see a lot of information about your data, like for example, how it will be shared with companies or organizations, how the data will be collected, and also if the developer allows you to request a delete for your data, and if this data is encrypted or not. This new data safety section will be available on mobile phones in the future. Now let's talk about the sound amplifier app and it got a complete redesign with material you support. You will first see a carousel to activate the phone mic or phone media. And when you activate the phone mic, as you see, there is a waveform over here that looks totally different from the previous version. So here's the previous version on my Pixel 4a and as you see, I only get a green bubble around the play and pause button. After that, you will see all the settings on the same page. But previously, we used to have different tabs for each uh, option. So for example, under noise, now you have a slider and instead of choosing between low, medium or high, and also it has a toggle to turn the feature on or off. Under sound, uh, we used to have the boost and fine tuning, but now there is a new section called boost that includes the same features. And under source, you can choose what type of mic to choose. But here, now you have it in the same page in a carousel, which is much easier to manage, in my opinion. There is also a new conversation mode that will allow you to use the phone camera and point it towards the person or the subject you want to enhance the sound for. And you can also switch between the front and back cameras and adjust the sound settings. Here you can change the noise reduction, boost quiet sounds, change the frequencies, and so on and so forth. And when it comes to the performance, as per Google, the noise reduction has been improved in this version. Next, Google TV app. And now you will see a lot of new changes, starting with the new highlights tab. This tab will simply surface any news, interviews, or articles about the shows and the movies you are interested in. And for example, this is one of the movies. And as you see, there is a small chip here with the movie name that will take you right away to the listing. So you can interact with it. You can also tap on the article to view it in a custom Chrome tab. And in some cases, you might see this icon tapping on it will show you more related articles about this movie or TV show. And that's pretty much it when it comes to the highlights. The home page has been replaced with For You and we no longer have the movies and TV show tabs at the top. However, now we have two separate cards, one for each listing. The third tab is called Shop and here you can buy or rent movies. And this one will replace the Movies and TV tab of Google Play Store. And your only option in the future is to use the Google TV app. The last page is called Your Stuff and here you will see your watch list and also your library classified into movies and shows. Now let me show you a couple of small tweaks across different apps and I will start with Google Maps. Now when you navigate to any location, you will see the street view car over here. Tapping on this icon will allow you to replace your navigation arrow with the street view car to celebrate the 15th anniversary of the street view feature. And once you tap on go, this is how the navigation arrow looks like. You can revert back to the normal arrow if you want by tapping on it over here. The second change is in Google Messages and now you will see a new animation when you tap on the Start Chat button. On the left, I have the newer version and when I tap on Start Chat, everything pops out on the screen immediately. But in the previous version, doing the same thing will animate the favorite contacts, which is slightly slower than the current one. Change number three, when you try to cast any media from YouTube Music or the YouTube app, now you will see a new section called Suggested, which will show you the recommended devices to cast your media to with the ability to remove any of the suggested devices using the X over here. And lastly, Google Assistant rolls out to Samsung Galaxy Watch 4 via Play Store. I don't have the Galaxy Watch 4 to show you how it looks, but here's an article from 9 to 5 Google that explains everything with the screenshots. So I'm going to leave its link in the description in case you are interested. So that's pretty much it for today. Those are all the new changes I wanted to share with you. Please let me know in the comments if you spotted any new feature in Google Apps so I can include in my future episodes. But for now, thank you so much for watching and see you in the next video.